Music and Booze with Mo is produced and distributed by Eats Drinks TV, a service of the Center for Culinary Culture, home of the Cocktail Collection and First Reel Entertainment, and is available wherever fine podcasts can be heard. The Center for Culinary Culture, telling the story of food and drink, one taste at a time. Welcome to Music and Booze with Mo. I'm Mo Herms, and I've worked in the music industry most of my life, so have met some pretty amazing musicians over the years. I also love a good cocktail, and I've encountered some really interesting bartenders as well. It seems that there is a lot of crossover, so when I can, I like to talk to musicians and bartenders about music and booze. Join us at the bar, won't you? Music and Booze with Mo is brought to you by The Mermaid, a cozy neighborhood bar with an aquatic flair in the little Tokyo area of downtown LA. Open seven days a week, featuring tropical cocktails and snacks, The Mermaid also has a daily happy hour from 5 to 8 p.m. Follow The Mermaid on Instagram at The Mermaid LA to hear about upcoming events and check them out at TheMermaidLA.com. Head to 428 East 2nd Street, Los Angeles, for a drink. Today I get to talk to John Pete, who is the owner of Jane's Hideaway and Jane's on Top in Nashville, Tennessee, and he will tell us all about his quick path to ownership. He did his time as a bartender and what it's like to open up a bar, restaurant, and music venue in the Music City during a pandemic. And it's become a Nashville favorite. So make sure you uh, get a little nip of whiskey so that you can take a listen to this particular episode. And we're going to tell you all about the ghost of Boots Randolph as well. I am the owner operator of a bar restaurant venue in Nashville, Tennessee called Jane's Hideaway. And then we have a second project that is on our rooftop called Jane's on Top. That's so awesome. we have a, it's like, a, I always call it a Tennessee supper club down mm-hmm. low. Um, cool food, lots of local ingredients, Tennessee grass fed animals, all the, all the fun stuff there. Yeah. And that's, that's our first floor where we do basically just live bluegrass or roots music every night. And then the top floor, we, we try a lot more. We, we're kind of open that stage up to really anything that doesn't get a lot of traction in downtown Nashville. Uh-huh. Um, so there, there is a ton of music in Music City USA, but a lot of it is the same music. <laughs> <laughs> One spot after the next. So we've, mm-hmm. we've tried to platform some different stuff and, mm-hmm. you know. and this is your is this your first venture this is my first bar yes. yeah congratulations on that it's it's a feat i own a bar too and it's my first and it, getting that thing done took a while you know <laughs> making that happen was it a dream come true and also completely horrifying <laughs> it is absolutely more than anything a dream come true yes uh, i i try to make sure i tell people thank you every day and I literally, when we have great accent here, I'm like, you guys are, you guys are making my dream come true. I promise. Yeah. You know? So you've been in the bartending world for a while then, right? To work your way up to owner. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole adult life has been in bar and restaurants. Yeah. How yeah. old were you when you started? I started bar backing in Cincinnati, uh, like 19 and then through 20. Um, mm-hmm. And then was lucky enough to get the behind get behind the bar when I was 21 and I'm 32 now, 33 mm-hmm. next month. So yeah, I've been paying my bills, pouring drinks. <laughs> most of the adult life, so. so when you were uh, bar backing, when you were behind the bar, I mean, was there something I've, I've talked to so many people 
who were just like, I always wanted to be a bartender. Even when they were like 18, 19 years old, they're like, I saw that and that's what I wanted to do. I mean, there's some people who fell into it, but there's some people who were like, there was just something about it. What was that for you? <clears throat> the, the schedule works for me. The, the <laughs> I, I do, I, I'm a night person. You're a night person, yet yeah. you were up early this morning. See, that's the, the pitfalls of ownership. <laughs> the schedule, you know, it works for me and there's something, there's something really cool about like it's it's instant gratification you know what mm -hmm. i mean like people come to you they're like this is what i want and you're like i have all that right here <laughs> I, can, you know, like, I can make that happen right now you know <laughs> and then and that's just like always been neat to me you know and it's, sometimes you get to introduce people to new things and mm -hmm. do that kind of stuff and i mean most of my friends my girlfriend everyone i really know now it's like i've met on some end of the bar, you know, either mm -hmm, we were mm -hmm. working next to each other or they were across the bar from me, but yeah, the bar's just, it's been where I, where I like to be. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, when you first got started, when you were just 21 and all, what kind of place was it that you were bartending at? I was working when I was 21, my first like real, real, bar when you were legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My first, like I'm pouring drinks, I'm working in a service well bar job was at a <coughs> Bakersfield. Uh, mm -hmm. in Cincinnati, which is named after Bakersfield, California. Oh. And they do kind of California style street tacos, really good guacamole. Mm -hmm. And their whole thing is like tacos, tequila, and whiskey. And it appealed a lot to the, the student in me at the time too, mm -hmm. because there's like, you get back there and half their bar's whiskey and half the bar's tequila. <laughs> I think there's like one mezcal available in the whole state of Ohio at the time. <laughs> None of the other cool lesser known, right. you know agave stuff that we get now but it was like <laughs> literally like here's 50 whiskeys and you can learn as much or as little as you want about these and then here's this wild world of 50 100 percent you know mm -hmm. agaves. and it's like just a really there's you could be the biggest dork about whatever you decide to be a nerd about but mm -hmm. for me the the spirits world was always really interesting i was like mm -hmm. i want to be a nerd about this mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> i completely I, understand that it's, i would like to figure this out yep. um, yeah and it sounds like when you were working at bakersfield that uh that was when the tequila thing was really blasting off in this country overall i mean i'm, I'm a california girl so we were aware of it already you know for a while but you're right. I would go to other states and be like, do you guys have any mezcal? And they're like, what are you talking about? Isn't that yeah. the thing with the worm in it? You know? <laughs> I mean, it was, it was cool because there's like, there was a desire for knowledge about that at mm -hmm. that time too, you know, and we were mm -hmm. the, one of the largest selections in Cincinnati for tequila, which, you know, is not a well-known tequila city. Yeah. But you could still kind of be like, hey, you're into this. Maybe we'll try this. You like that. Maybe we'll, you know, there's there's room to introduce people and show people really cool stuff that they didn't know they wanted, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so that that was always a it was a draw for me. Mm -hmm. so. Well, the other thing interesting uh, and I have to ask is um, it's a place called Bakersfield and it was yeah. named after this after the city out here in California which is also very well known for the Baker's Sa Bakersfield sound. So you had to have some Buck Owens, I'm assuming, while you were there. <laughs> that, was, that was a big point, part of the name, was kind of the outlaw country Bakersfield sound mm -hmm. kind of thing. So um, there are quite a few Bakersfields now. I'm not even sure how many. Really? Are. Yeah, they've grown that brand quite a bit. There's one in Nashville. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, there's... Uh, I'm still very good friends with one of the owners and they, they were actually given a key to the city of Bakersfield, oh, California, wow. <laughs> which is really, really neat. That's in their tiny original one that I was with them at, but they, I know they're in Columbus, they're in Indianapolis, they're wow. in Carolinas, they're in Tennessee. They're yeah, they've, they've grown that brand quite a bit. Really <laughs> did they have, did they have music too, or was it just a no, that was not a music video. <clears throat> okay, so it's just uh, a tribute to. Yeah, the music there is a tribute to, and they would play kind of spaghetti westerns and Clint Eastwood flicks and stuff on the TV all the Yeah, time. yeah, so a definite vibe. <laughs> so where did you move on after that? Because, I mean, you, from what I can tell, have made a pretty, a relatively quick uh, path to ownership. 
which is amazing. Yeah, I, I, I have. And I'm lucky to say that I was able to do that. Uh, yeah. After I graduated college in Cincinnati, I moved actually to your neck of the woods and lived in Los Angeles. Oh, hey. <laughs> and loved LA. It was great. And I moved, I was there for right at like two years. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I was there actually playing with a, playing piano with a band that I was in in college. And once uh, things kind of went dry with the band, it was time to try somewhere else. And uh, honestly, I just didn't want to be the hipster that moved straight from LA to New York. Yeah. I was like, this is a little cliche. And <laughs> They were, they were opening the Bakersfield in Cincinnati at the time. And I saw on Facebook, uh, they're like, we're hiring bartenders in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, well, they were opening the one down here at the time. Mm -hmm. And I called them and was like, I hit them up. And I was like, I've never been to Nashville. You think it's cool? And they're like, we'll come out and open the restaurant and stick around if you want. Yeah. And that was like six years ago. And I have Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Did not see myself settling down here in the way that I have, but I. Yeah. Nashville has been incredibly kind to me. It is. That's a, awesome. Yeah, that's all I can really say about this city. That happened to me with Los Angeles. I live. I'm from San Diego. I lived in the Bay Area for a long time, and I was decided, okay, I'm going to move to LA, see what that's all about. And I had a job lined up, but it went away because of 9/11. Wow. And I Amoeba Amoeba Records. You know Amoeba. You lived here for a minute. Absolutely. Um, I in the Bay Area. I knew the owners. I was friends with them. I worked in radio. We, you know, and I called them. And I'm like, I know you're opening a store in LA. Can I please work there? And they were like, oh my God, absolutely. So I came in and I helped open that Amoeba in LA. That's and awesome. same, I was like, just linked in. I knew all the bands. I knew all the everybody. And it was fantastic. It was the best way to land in this town. And I feel the same way as you did. I felt like LA was giving me things. You yeah. know, it was sort of like it welcomed me here and it doesn't welcome people as you probably know. <laughs> I, it's funny because a lot of people in Tennessee have hard and fast ideas about Californians, oh, you know, yeah. they're, like, yeah. they're like, oh, how is L.A.? And I was like, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic city to be young and dumb in. Like, I was, <laughs> I was, like, That's true. I was standing behind <laughs> cool bars, making money and like, I right. Like, it was great. You know, like I had a great time. I learned a ton about the bar and restaurant industry while I was mm -hmm. there. Where were you working when you were in LA? <clears throat> the first bar I landed at, I, uh, I was at a spot that isn't there anymore called the proper. That was, out Oh, I remember the proper. I told yeah. you that so place. Yeah. They had, speaking of being a dork, they had like <laughs> in selection in the country at the mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. And so white chapel opened, I think. <laughs> in san francisco they were boasting it and mm -hmm. i don't think they even called them out on it um <laughs> so that was their claim and it was super fun to get like, <clears throat> into the gin there and stuff we did like mm -hmm. a house made gin that we were i was nice. i was hiking out along foothills to uh grab like wild sagebrush and stuff like that to make up cool gins and it was a really rad time. I left them to go to Good Times at Davy Wayne. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which is a cool venue bar. Yeah, like, yeah. A total change of pace and great. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I... Totally different, but who doesn't like drinking in their dad's, you know, yeah. 70s playroom or whatever? <laughs> yeah, and Good Times was a... It was a really good time. Mm -hmm. And the last job that I had while I was in Los Angeles was uh, in the Arts District at 82. Oh, uh, my bar is right up the street from there. Oh, actually. really? Yeah, it's called The Mermaid. It's in Little Tokyo. So just a couple blocks up from there. Mm -hmm. Super rad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Part of the opening team of all three of those. Well, I nice. I, nice. Uh, I really, for some reason, if I'm looking for a job, I always look to see what's opening. Well, I, that's super smart. I mean, I'm sure that has helped you immensely in opening up this bar, you know, yeah. opening up your bar because you learned yeah. a lot, I'm sure. And I... You know, something about like the, the, we're not sure what's going on, you know, like you come in for branding <laughs> and actually you're putting bar stools together and like, yeah. And they're like, well, we don't have liquor yet, but uh, you want to paint the bathrooms? <laughs> and I'm like, kind of not, but yeah, I'm like into this. <laughs> <laughs> That's been super rewarding for me in my life. And every, mm -hmm. almost every restaurant I've worked at in Nashville, I was there on a big day too. I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, I want to be there. Like, yeah, it feels yeah. so good to be part of that, you yeah. know? 
seeing it come together and stuff like that. So, so you've been in Nashville for six years now, you said? Yeah. And yeah. you landed in Nashville, started bartending there. And what? Seven years now. I'm doing seven years. Yeah. yeah, it's going by. Well, you know what? We had that pandemic in the middle of it all. And that sort of makes our time skewed, I think, you know, <laughs> um, and everything was closed, you know, during that time. So <clears throat> you got there and bartended, but at what point did you realize, Hey, I could do this. I could, I could be one of the owners. Um, <clears throat> it's, been, it's been an aspiration of mine for mm -hmm. quite a long time. And I, there's some folks that I really respect that were opening a restaurant like three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, and at the time saving money, I was like, I'm going to do something and i was working at a great venue in town here called skulls rainbow room mm. um it's like a burlesque and jazz club nice <laughs> uh, that i can't say enough nice things about skulls uh, it's it's definitely worth stopping in if you uh come to nashville it's a very historic and iconic place too um <clears throat> but i was over there and was making great money over there and cost of living <laughs> at that time was a little bit lower in Nashville. And I, so I talked to some people and I was like, I'd love to do this with you. Like, mm -hmm. I want to do this thing. And they were like, dude, if you're saving that much money, you need to buy a house in East Nashville while you can still afford it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you need to run a couple bar programs before you jump into the ownership side. And I took that very seriously. And I was like, you know what, actually, and I'm so glad I did. Um, because buying a house in East Nashville has been one of the smarter things that I've done in my life. That was super, <laughs> uh, no, no regrets on that one. I, and I love my place. And, and then I went out and ran a couple of bar programs and mm -hmm. they were totally right. You know, it's like, just because you are pretty good at standing behind a bar, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. find somewhere that makes you do some paperwork, mm -hmm. you know, you got to go to the bank. You're yep. running. To, yep. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're running out for oranges at like four o'clock on a Friday because yep. you, <laughs> you know, all of those things. And I did. And I, I, I find management to be very rewarding. You know, I like to, uh, I like to be the person who's like, look, I've done that before. I'll do it again. Like, mm -hmm. I want to help you. I want to, I want to make you better at this, you know, mm -hmm. and I, when it comes, and I have a lot of people in my, age demographic that are my peers that are like, how'd you, how'd you manage to do this already? And I'm mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and I, I tell all my friends and I'm actually having dinner with somebody tonight. I'm like, dude, I'll, I will bring spreadsheets that showed exactly how much it costs. Like mm -hmm. I'll let you read our lease. Like I, I want to be a resource to people who like want to make this happen. Mm -hmm. also, like, you know, don't burn a bridge ever because yeah. <laughs> you're probably going to need to go back and ask those people for money at some point if you want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and I can just think of the matter, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I definitely have a former employer as one of my main investors, you know, and that's, mm -hmm. like, that's, you're going to need that. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it might not be the person that you're working for right now. It might be somebody that you worked for three or four years ago, but yep. don't, don't let those bridges burn down. And, and eventually, you know, when the right thing comes along, it, which I hope it does for anyone who's aspiring to open a bar. Yeah. Yeah hopefully you got your ducks in a row and you're ready to do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Our spot was a really, really wild story because I, I mentioned that it was a former employer who was one of my partners. He mm -hmm. uh, tried to hire me back to run a restaurant in a different city. Oh. I, I did leave Nashville once in my stay here, and I went and opened a really cool distillery tasting room with some friends of mine in New Jersey mm -hmm. um, called the Asbury Park Distilling Company, and I was running their front of house and tasting room. And it was one of these things where actually got great advice from my dad which he's pretty good at that and I was like well this is a this is a kind of cool deal they were they wanted to offer me a little equity stake if I mm. if we clicked and I relocated to Asbury Park and wanted to grow this distillery with them which we got along fine but I was like I don't think I want to 
moved to New Jersey. Like I <laughs> Tennessee was calling me back. And so I, did, I had a really fun summer up there. But it was funny because my dad was like, well, if you can go to a city where you don't know anyone and open a successful bar program, then you could probably just come back to Nashville and do the same thing mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. know that you can do it. Mm-hmm. You know, like know mm-hmm. that you, you could you can go there and do that thing. You could do it probably in a town where you already have connections and know a lot of people. So mm-hmm. it was really fun. And I have a ton of love for Asbury Park and actually have the guy who was my lead bartender at Asbury Park is now the general manager at Jane's on top. Oh, uh-huh. that's awesome. <laughs> so you sold them. <laughs> he was calling more than one of us back. So yeah. <clears throat> That's amazing. So, and Jane's has been doing pretty well in the short time you've been open, right? Didn't you guys like, doesn't the neighborhood love you? It has, it's been, it's been great. Um, so we won the Nashville Scenes uh, Reader's Choice Best New Restaurant of 2020. Nice. 2020. 20, 2021. Yeah. <laughs> 2020 doesn't count. <laughs> it's a big year for us because <laughs> It was an interesting time, but it, the, the restaurant that was in the space that James Hideaway is now in, um, mm-hmm. when the shutdown happened, they, they already had some other projects they were working on, and they're like, we're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. And they went to the landlord, and we're like, we're out. And he was like, okay. And they essentially agreed that they would leave everything. Wow. Lock the doors and call it a day. Yeah. And so when we walked in, we had like forks and knives, plates. Wow. A furnished kitchen and yeah. it's like yeah so like it's all here if you guys want to do it but we started paying rent day one yeah yeah and we couldn't open the doors day one you yeah, know totally like mm-hmm. you, it's yours if you want it but yeah. you got a little crazy to sign a lease in june 2020 and we were like all right let's go for it you know uh, okay but it was great because i had so many friends that were out of work at the time and a restaurant that just needed a little facelift. Right. Was, and would be ready to go. So I had musician friends of mine and bartender friends of mine and stuff. And I was like, man, I'll just, I'll pay a hundred dollars a day to come paint or come yeah. do this and help me get this project up and running. So it was, it was really cool. I got to employ a lot of unemployed friends. Yeah. The first three months while we were painting things and cleaning things and, and getting it, putting our brand on it. And then, September 2020 is when Nashville started reopening at 50%. Mm-hmm. And it was great. A little bit of a blessing because we didn't have to do a soft opening. Because mm-hmm. I was like, if we're only filling half the half restaurant. Half of it anyway. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did, instead of a soft opening, we just did a silent opening. I was like, all right, this Friday, we're going to open the doors. And I'm not even going to put it on my Instagram. Like, <laughs> Just let people walk down the street and see that it's open. That was it. Yeah. yeah. It was like this Friday, we're going to open the doors. No one knows we're here. So if things go awry or like, the, yeah, if we don't feel like we can handle what comes in, we're just going to close the doors because mm-hmm. we didn't tell anyone they'd be open. <laughs> like, you no, know, we don't have reservations on the books. Like, okay, let's, let's open from five to 10 all weekend and like, we'll see just see what happens. See how it goes. Yeah. And it was, it was, really cool and I've never quite opened a restaurant like that and I don't think you will ever be able to again uh, yeah I was gonna say it is definitely the last couple years have been <laughs> we're all just doing things and seeing what happens you know one of one strategy but I was just yeah. like, like no we're just not gonna tell anyone also well, a, another big contributing factor to that is I have a lot of friends in Los Angeles and Mm -hmm. I have friends who own bars in New York and I had a little bit of guilt being in Nashville Mm -hmm. and being like my bar's open you know it it felt very I was like there's no way to say this without sounding a little bit arrogant you know or a little bit just like like I didn't want to be like hey I know all my friends are still locked inside but I I just opened a new restaurant, you yeah, know? Yeah. We no, like, I understand. I mean, we're, we're, I'm in Los Angeles, but fortunately my bar serves food. So we mm-hmm. were able to be open, but you know, we were always cocktails first, food second, you know, but we kind of had to make it food first at that time. And same, we were doing gangbuster business 
you know, I mean, we were one of the few places in the area where someone could sit outside in a nice patio and have a drink and, yeah. you know, have some booze. And we had some guilt. It was all, it's almost like survivor's guilt in a way, you know, we're, yeah. we're feeling like, oh God, we're doing great right now, but we're only doing this great because nobody can go anywhere else. You yeah. know? <laughs> and, you know, to be fair, we already were like a neighborhood hang, but you know, and once everything did open up again, our business did go down, but not in such a way that it was dangerous to us. We were sort of like, this is a good reason for our business to be less. It means that people get to go other places again. Our friends, our neighbors get to be open again. But I feel you on that. There, there was sort of like this, to be the last person standing for a minute, you're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like blow up your friend's Instagram feed and be like, great. Hey, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think for you, that's, I think it's great that you got to do it in this way too, because especially during the pandemic, neighborhoods became even more important. You know, that community thing became even more important. And so we found that we had so many people coming to our bar who lived like within a block or two and had never been there before because they're like, eh, we live in downtown LA. We go anywhere and they're doing whatever. But now they saw that we had a giant, we have food sign out front and they're walking across the street, ordering food and taking it back to their home because it's safe and they can try our cocktails. And then we got to know so many of our neighbors, immediate, like, people living in the apartments above us kind of neighbors, which was great. And for you, probably the same thing. People just walking down the street are like, Hey, wait a minute. That place is open now. Yeah. They're they're here. Yeah. (laughs) Something's going on over there. What's that all about? When did that happen? Uh I'm in Nashville. I mean, when things were shut down, so much construction got done in downtown Nashville. Oh yeah. Like an obscene amount of of construction just (laughs) beat it because they didn't have to worry about closing roads or anything like that yeah and, um yeah so there was this whole kind of like you know new crop of things that were opening up and we we got lumped in with some really cool really really neat spots and yeah yeah it was awesome like, yeah we're we're still the new guys yeah we're though and if if we want to get into some music stuff too oh yeah i'm, I'm going there <laughs> but keep going is uh the space is something that like deserves a little reverence because it is Boots Randolph's old jazz club. <gasps> no way. Yeah. That's incredible. Boots right. Randolph operated a club in the space that is now Jane's Hideaway mm-hmm. from the early 70s to the mid 90s. So nice. nice. Like walking in there I was like We're, you know music will happen here. We mm-hmm. need to we need to do this again cuz they had like the last tenant was like a seafood restaurant and there's been a few there between the nineties and now there's been a number of things that have happened, but it was like, this room is dying for some music, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. like it, it needs to be central and focal. And <clears throat> I mean, so neat. There's definitely a ghost down there. I don't know if it's boots. I, <laughs> if it is like, I hope he's stoked, you know, like, <laughs> I love ghost stories. So you have to tell me at least one there, you know, I'm, there yeah, are, something. yeah, there's, there's the ghost at Jane's is super, super friendly. There's a mezzanine section that we open for private parties and stuff like that. <laughs> and pretty much everyone who works there is like, because we have it closed off unless there's an event up there. And everyone who works at Jane's at some point has been like, is it, do we have an event upstairs? Because it's like, you see a dude kind of standing in the corner up there, just kind of watching the band. Nice. And it's like, no. Nope. And then they're like, never mind. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, he mainly just like hangs in the man, like Phantom of the and- Opera style up there, just watches some music. And I'm like, nice, oh, nice. Part of this band, man. Like they're, they're pretty sick, you know? So like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it's um, bluegrass that you have downstairs most of the time. Yeah. That kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe you have to have a jazz night or something and see if that ghost uh, shifts. See you know, does a little move. Shifts little bit dancing. Yeah. yeah. We've had. You know, maybe he would be upset if we had a saxophone player. That's true. That's a good point. The Nashville saxophone. Yeah.
I I grew up playing piano. Yeah. I have a piano in my house for the first time in like uh, 15 years. That must be kind of great, huh? Oh, it's super nice. It's an upright. <laughs> it was a very odd circumstance. I had, uh, again, just employed some friends of mine. I posted on Instagram. I was like, hey, I need to move some furniture out of the restaurant. If anyone's got time tomorrow, I'll pay you 100 bucks if you show up and help me move some heavy stuff. And uh, we were just going to throw it in the shed at my house. And we literally pulled this U-Haul full of like chairs we weren't using into the alley. Mm-hmm. And there's an upright piano. In the alley? Behind my house, which like <laughs> doesn't happen. It's a what? <laughs> area. I like went over and there's like some dead keys and it's like, mm-hmm. doesn't have a brand on it at all. It's definitely not a nice piano. <laughs> but I was like, okay, somebody threw this piano away. It doesn't look like it's been out here that long. And, um, and I was like, how weird is it that I have three guys with me Yeah, that all happen to be here on the pretext of we're moving heavy things tomorrow. <laughs> you know, and like, I'm like, guys, this piano happens to be here. Like, <laughs> like, let's get, let's warm up. <laughs> yeah, thought that I conned them into moving a piano. Like it would be pretty <laughs> easy to claim that I did. Um, <laughs> but I was like, so we kind of, we got to take this in my house. Like I, I kind of need, we got to do this, you mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. We're gonna pick it up. And we're like, oh yeah, we can we can move this. It, it, <laughs> like it's, it's not a luxurious piece of. Yeah, but it'll do right now. You know, yeah, I'm sure it's fun to play. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm, what made you start playing piano? Was it something that like your parents decided you needed to learn an instrument, or did you hear something that motivated you to to choose one of the most expensive instruments you can learn to play? <laughs> No, I um, definitely had friends growing up that were taking piano lessons that have like, you know, pianos in their homes already and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And at some point in like second or third grade, I asked my parents if I could like take piano lessons. I was like, I, I, like you were talking about some people when they're like in their teens and they see someone bartending, they're like, I want to do that. I saw, Mm -hmm. I saw friends of mine learning how to play piano. I was like, I want to do that. And I... I played quite a bit and played with uh, musicals in, at my high school and stuff like that. And once I got to college, I kind of fell off. Uh, mm-hmm. I was not playing as much. I, I think it was my junior year in high school. I played the score for Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat with wow. our, <laughs> with our uh, high school theater. Orchestra, yeah. Yeah, and I had to, I was taking lessons like three times a week and my my parents again were smart on this one because I would like wanted to go to college for piano performance. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, I mean, this is kind of what you would be doing if you did that. So why don't you take on this very difficult task and <laughs> tell me if you still want to do that forever. <laughs> <laughs> like I got through that and I was like, no, that, that, that took all the- I enjoyed it, but it took all the joy out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. We're not gonna- That's not what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, but you still wound up in bands at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I still ended up playing keyboards with some people and stuff, you know, like that. And then, uh, and then oddly enough, I'm like the only person who moved to Nashville and like doesn't play. Like I, got- <laughs> <laughs> I played music up until the time I got to Nashville and was like, I'm done. Like, I'm- <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of bands were you playing with when you were doing that? Um, mainly doing, uh, production and stuff for, Mm -hmm. uh, hip hop group. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that was completely unexpected for me. I would not think you'd be playing piano and doing keyboard work for, for hip hop. Yeah, no, sampling and drum patterns and stuff like that for, uh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, so that was, that was super fun and still something I think is really cool. I mean, I still listen to a lot of rap music and Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely enjoy it. It, well, what we, help, we, oh, help me ahead. out here? Some piano, some piano, hip hop kind of stuff. Because all I can think of is Dre. <laughs> Dre's great. I. It was more like most. I would say hip hop producers spend a lot of time in front of a keyboard. Whether mm-hmm. or not they're playing straight piano mm-hmm. is not. You know, I wasn't playing straight piano. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not, not rapping over Coldplay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 bitches and shit, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So what was it that you were doing then? Like, like Ableton live production kind of nice. stuff. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it off of, yeah. Using a keyboard yeah. in the background and then playing live keys. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. And then you came to Nashville and you were done. No more music. Like, uh, now it's just for you and your house on yeah. your, on your upright piano with, did you fix those keys? On my therapy piano. I did. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, there you go. Therapy piano. I like it. <laughs> than netflix at the end of the night to like actually i yeah i agree with that because that would yeah i mean i love i can't play piano but when everyone was around i'd tinker around on it and i used to play guitar a little bit so i could i could pound out you know some some things and yeah. i'm like you could recognize this melody even though i'm not doing this with all of my fingers i'm just using like two or three <laughs> but uh, my husband is someone who um he can, he can play piano and he just makes stuff up, but he uses both hands and he's all over the place and he's never taken a lesson. And yeah. to me, it sounds wonderful. And he pretty much only does it after a couple of drinks, but he will kind of go into a trance and just play. And that's the thing I think with piano too is, and some other instruments as well, but piano, especially I would think would be almost meditative in a way. Yeah. I mean, and I do have a shelf of whiskey directly above my piano. No. Oh, okay. Seems yeah. appropriate for an upright. <laughs> Especially for someone who used to work in a burlesque bar, you know, <laughs> he wound your oh, way back. Such great pianists to go through that. They go, they do like live jazz band burlesque, and it's mm -hmm. it's unreal how good those guys are. So. so with Jane's on top, you were saying that that's a place where you're hoping to highlight uh, music that isn't necessarily already getting a lot of attention in, in Nashville, because we do know Nashville is like a country country town you know it's all about that country music and everything the various forms of country and western <laughs> as they say <laughs> that is a hundred percent down here mm -hmm. so jane's on top we do we do a wide berth of things up here which is actually i'm in jane's on top right now mm -hmm. um, but we have a weekly hip-hop night called hip-hop on top mm. which has been going really well because they're there is a oh, I'm sure there's a huge hip hop scene. Mm -hmm. There's a number of local artists and they're like they're like, dude, there's literally zero places in downtown Nashville that would mm -hmm. ever do that. And I'm like, uh, why not? You know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you? You know, mm -hmm. we've we've started working with a comedy troupe up here. So we do like a monthly comedy night, which is really fun, which is mm -hmm. yet another thing that just doesn't get a lot of traction in downtown Nashville. Mm -hmm. We uh mm -hmm. And then we have a really fun writer's round up here, which is a oh. Nashville thing. A lot of people don't know what a writer's round is. But I have no idea. There's a lot of songwriters in town mm -hmm. and a writer's round is every hour there's like three songwriters and they mm -hmm. just go down a line and sing songs that they've written. Mm -hmm. And then the next hour there's like three more. So if you show up for like a four hour writer's round, you'll probably see 12 to 15 aspiring songwriters kind of getting up and being like, that's playing awesome. like three songs each. And yeah, it could be, it could be really fun to hear some of these people. And you're like, okay, yeah, I could see that being a hit country song, or I could see that being a hip hop song. Like, yeah, you, you get it, you know? <laughs> and, um, so that's really fun. So we're not doing anything too experimental. We also, we have a couple of great DJs that play here on Friday, Saturday nights after 10 too. Mm -hmm. So we'll have, <clears throat> some classic country Broadway stuff every now and then Broadway's the main drag in Nashville where all the all the very all of my peers you know that own bars I, I joke and call all the country stars in Nashville uh, who own bars my peers um, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah Jason Aldean like my peer uh, <laughs> that awesome. Nashville, so I love being like oh yeah my dear friend and peer Justin Timberlake we opened bars in <laughs> at the same time like <laughs> two blocks that way. that's awesome that's awesome well it is community and it's small enough you know you yeah. probably will be hanging out hey what's up yeah how's it going in your bar yeah <laughs> i wanted to ask you too if you had um I, I love to ask this question in case you have an answer and do you have a pairing like a when you're home, you were just saying, actually, you get home and play piano a lot of time, but do you, you know? sip on some whiskey and play some piano or what is your music? And, uh, um, when you're not working, what is your music yeah. and booze combo when you're, when you're just hanging out and having some downtime for yourself 
or maybe not. Maybe it's when you're sitting at the bar. What do you want to be listening to and drinking when you're there? I mean, yeah, me playing piano and drinking overproof whiskey at the end of the night is a is a very, very common one. I do, um, and I know a number of people feel this way. I do love uh, music and booze combo. I would say I love cooking to like really aggressive rap. <laughs> You're gonna have to give me a song. <laughs> yeah, rappers that I follow, like when a new album's out, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna listen to that next time I'm cooking. Which <laughs> doesn't like exactly add up, but like I just, love it though. That's great. <laughs> so, well, you know, I mean, I hear the uh, like the aggressive rap for like my old workout trainer. That was what he always did. And, you know, it's kind of that beast mode kind of thing if you're working yeah. out. But it's funny to associate that mentality to cooking. You yeah, know, like like I'm gonna cook the fuck out of the steak, you know. <laughs> I play the machine, who is uh, one of the members of Griselda, uh, mm -hmm. and they do. I mean, aggressive kind of, very gang drug oriented rap music, and like yeah. I'm like so excited to cook dinner to that tomorrow. Like that's <laughs> gonna be nice. It's like a very relaxing thing, very juxtaposed with uh, nice, nice. <laughs> be relaxing um, well when you're uh, playing what what's what are some numbers you like to play on your piano when you come home i've been working through this uh stride piano workbook that i picked up so like oh. which i think is like a really cool uh kind of bar room sounding yeah you know chaplin era stride totally um which i think is which i just think is a really neat style of piano that that can lend itself a little country and a little jazz, but mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's super fun. So sounds great on a dusty upright. And mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, that's my new kind of technique that I'm working on. So oh, that's cool. Jazz classics and stride style. And yeah, that's, it's a, it's fun. It's difficult, but it's, it's really neat. But it's um, fun. Yeah. 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 Well, I like it. Well, now that you've told us what to uh, listen to and drink, maybe we can wrap this all up and you can tell people how to find you, how to find Jane's, you know, all that for anyone who's visiting Nashville or anyone who's already there and hasn't checked out your neighborhood yet. <laughs> so Jane's Hideaway, we're on Third Avenue in mm -hmm. downtown Nashville. Our back entrance is on Printer's Alley, which is a very cool historic part of Nashville. So you go down a flight of stairs in Printer's Alley to get into uh, Jane's Hideaway. Um, you can find us online pretty easily. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you're the only Jane's Hideaway. I believe there <laughs> was a hair salon somewhere that could <laughs> Jane's Hideaway. Mm -hmm. um, so well, pretty easy to find at Jane's Hideaway on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, personally, I'm at Whiskey Hold the Rocks on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, when whiskey hold the rocks underneath, do you even say John Pete? Is that even there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, You're super anonymous in your nom de plumes. <laughs> no. Nope, not at all. That's a, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And pretty much, and people can probably find you at the bar probably every day. I'm here all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I really appreciate it. It was so great to talk to John. I hope that if you are ever in Nashville, as I hope to be in Nashville one day, that you also stop and visit Jane's Hideaway. You can find them on Instagram at Jane's Hideaway. And then also find John at Whiskey with an E, Hold the Rocks, on Instagram. And you've got to go over to my Spotify, SheBMO, S-H-E-B-M-O, and check out the playlist that John passed on to me. It features all the bands that have played at the bar and it's a really fantastic set of music um friends of jane there you go are you a friend of jane i think i'm a friend of jane music and booze with mo is brought to you by barkeeper a head shop for cocktail lovers located at 614 north hoover street in silver lake los angeles stop by for barware vintage glassware, 
a carefully curated collection of spirits, and one of the most impressive selections of bitters anywhere. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook for information regarding spirits tastings. That's barkeepersilverlake.com and also in the Virgil Village neighborhood of Silver Lake, Los Angeles. Thank you for tuning in to our barroom chats on music and booze with Mo. For more info about today's guest, or if you want to connect with me, check out my Facebook page, Mo Herms. Please subscribe to the podcast and feel free to tell all your friends about it. While you're there, give the show a rating and a review. It really helps to get the word out. If you want to hear the playlists our guests have curated, search She Be Mo on Spotify, S-H-E-B-M-O. Find pictures of the interviewees and the cool stuff they create on the Music and Booze with Mo Instagram account. Lower your expectations and join us at the bar. Till next time, cheers. Cheers.